In this session, we'll be looking at the Chinese reminder theorem. So what this theorem says is, say if you have a system of k equations given like this, that is x is congruent to a1 mod n1. Here a1 is the reminder we get when we divide x by n1. Like that, we have a system of k equations. It, it is x is congruent to a2 mod n2 and so on up till x is congruent to a k mod n k. The important condition here is if any two numbers n1 n2 if we take any two numbers these two numbers are co prime numbers or relatively prime numbers so the condition here is if we have pairwise co prime that is gcd of any number ni comma nj is equal to 1 if we have such a system of k equations then we can very well find the value of x, x as a unique solution. That's what the theorem says. Let's take an example here. For instance, I have x is congruent to 2 mod 3. It's, it's like this. When I divide x by 3, I get a reminder of 2. When I divide x by 4, I get a reminder of 3. When I divide x by 5, I get a reminder of 1. So x is a unique solution. x is one number. When it's used in all these equations, we get all these reminders with respect to the mod given here. Only condition we have to check is, is there a pairwise co-prime in this set of numbers n1, n2, n3. So 3 is co-prime with 4, 4 is co-prime with 5, 3 is co-prime with 5. So any pair of numbers you take, it has a GCD of 1. So when you have a system of k equations like this, obviously there is a unique solution for x. Chinese reminder theorem is all about finding that x. So we'll go and see how to find that x. Now let us take a look at the formula for finding x. So this is the formula. It is nothing but a1 n1 c1 plus a2 n2 c2 plus etc up till a k n k c k mod n. So we have to compute the value of n first. We'll also consider a system of equations wherein we have three equations like this. x is congruent to a1 mod n1, x is congruent to a2 mod n2, x is congruent to a3 mod n3. Here we'll limit k to 3. So that is the meaning. Now let us see how to compute n for a system of three equations n is nothing but n1 into n2 into n3. So here k is 3. So it is nothing but n1 into n2 into n3. So that is the formula for computing n. If you have k, then it is n1 into n2 into star star up to nk. Since n is 3 here, we have it as n1 into n2 into n3. And what is ni? ni is nothing but it can be n1, n2 up to nk. It is capital N divided by N small n i. So let's substitute some values. Let's compute N for this uh, system of equations. So N and instead of i, if I take a 1, what is this N? It is nothing but N1, N2, N3 for these three equations divided by small n1. And these two things can cancel out. So capital N1 is equal to n2 into n3. Likewise, you can also compute capital N2. What is N2? It is capital N by N2. That is N1, N2, N3 by N2. So N2 get cancelled out. What you will have? What you will have? It's N1 star N3. So we know how to compute N2. What about NK? Here NK is nothing but we have only three equations. That is N3. How will you compute n3? n3 is nothing but n1 star n2. How you get this? This is nothing but capital N by small n3. That is nothing but n1, n2, n3 divided by small n3. So these two things cancel out. So what is n3? It is nothing but n1 star n2. Let us take a simple example, let's solve it, then you'll be able to understand it further. Let me raise all ink on the side. Let's take an example here. So we have taken 
some values here. We have a set of equations wherein when x divided by 3 gives a reminder 2, the same x when divided by 4 gives a reminder 3 and when x is divided by 5 it gives a reminder 1. Now find x. So given such a problem you have to use the Chinese reminder theorem and try to solve it for finding the value of x. What is the first step you have to check whether n1, n2, n3 are they pairwise co-prime. Is 3 is co-prime with 4? Yes. Is 4 is co-prime with 5? Yes. Is 3 is co-prime with 5? Yes. Since these numbers satisfy pairwise co-prime, we can very well go and solve it using the Chinese reminder theorem. So let's go and uh, compute all the values here. Let me write what is A1? A1 is 2. So this is a1, a2, a3, right? And what is a2? a2 is 3. What is a3? a3 is 1. This is n1, n2, n3. Let me write them to n1 is equal to 3, n2 is equal to 4, n3 is equal to 5. Yeah, this is co-prime. We have already checked that. I've also uh, pasted the formula here. Now what is that first step? You have to compute n. n is nothing but n1 into n2 into n3. What is n1 into n2 into n3? What is the value of n here? That is 3 into 4 into 5. So n is 60. 12 into 5 is 60. You all understood this. The next step what you have to do is we have to calculate n1, n2 and n3 because we have only three equations. What is n1? n1 is nothing but n2 into n3. What is n2 into n3? 4 into 5. So this is 20. The next thing is we have to compute n2. What is n2 here? n2 is nothing but n1 into n3. So that is nothing but 3 into 5, 15. Next thing we have to compute is N3. So what is N3? That is nothing but N1 cross N2. What is N1 into N2? That is 3 into 4, 12. So when you take a look at this equation, we know what is a1, we know what is n1, we know what is a2 and n2, we know what is a3 and n3. The next thing that we have to compute is, we have to compute c1, c2 and c3. So what is this c1, c2 and c3? They are nothing but the multiplicative inverse. So in our last session, we have seen how to compute modular multiplicative inverse. So C1, C2, C3 are nothing but the modular multiplicative inverses. Let us go and compute them. Now we need to compute the multiplicative inverses C1, C2 and C3. But before that, let me write the values of N1, N2, N3 here. What is N1? N1 is nothing but 20. N2 is 15 and uh, what is n3? n3 is 12 based on our previous slides and uh, the formula for computing the multiplicative inverses n1 into the inverse is equal to 1 mod small n1. This can also be written like this right n1 c1 mod n1 is equal to 1. Let's substitute the values for n1, c1 and n1. What is n1? That is 20. c1 we have to find. What is mod n1? Mod 3 should be equal to 1. So now we have to find what is c1 such that when it is multiplied by 20 in mod 3 it gives the result 1. We have seen how to find multiplicative inverses, modular multiplicative inverses in a previous session. Please apply that. We will use that trick here. We will
will just take 20 divided by 3. What is the remainder? The remainder is 2. So now we will use 2. So 2 into C1 mod 3 is equal to 1. What should be C1 now? 2 into 2 will be 4. 4 mod 3 will be 1. So C1 should be 2. So it is 2 into 2 mod 3 is equal to 1. So it is 4 mod 3 is equal to 1, 1 equal to 1. So we have determined C1, C1 to be 2. Likewise, can we determine what is C2? So the formula for C2 is N2 C2 is equal to 1 mod N2. We can even write this like this, right? N2 C2 mod N2 is equal to 1. We know what is capital N2 that is 15. What is C2? We have to find mod. What is this N2? This N2 is from the given equation that is 4. So this should be equal to 1. So how will you find this C2? We will again take 15. We will divide it by 4. So 4 into 3 is 12. The remainder is 3. Now we will substitute this here. 3 into C2 mod 4 is equal to 1. So what should be the value of C2 here? So this is nothing but when we have C2 to be 3, 3 into 3 mod 4 is equal to 1. So that is nothing but 9 mod 4. So when you divide 9 by 4, the remainder is 1. So 1 is equal to 1. So we have determined C2 to be 3. The next thing is we have to determine what is C3. Let me erase. Let's determine C3. So we have to find C3. For that it's N3 into C3 is equal to 1 mod N3. We know N3 is 5. This N3 is nothing but 12. So it's nothing but 12 C3 mod 5 should be equal to 1. So what we'll do is we'll take 12 divided by 5. 5 into 2 is 10. So remainder is 2. So it is 2 into C3 mod 5 should be equal to 1. So when C3 is 3, we can very well say when C3 is 3, we get 2 into 3 mod 5. This is nothing but 6 mod 5. So 1 is equal to 1. So we have identified C3 to be 3. So we have found out all the values. The only thing that we have to do is we have to go back, substitute all our values in this equation and determine the value of x. Let's go and compute x here. So what is x? x is equal to a1. a1 is 2 into n1. n1 is 20 into c1. What is c1? We computed it as 2. So that is the first term. Plus what is a2? a2 is 3. What is n2? n2 is 15 into what is c2? C2 we have computed that as 3 plus what is A3? A3 is 1. What is N3? N3 is 12. And what is C3? C3 is 3. The entire thing mod 60. Now let's go and compute the values here. What is that we are going to get? So this will be 40 into 2, 80 plus 135 plus 
36 the entire thing mod 60 so that is nothing but 251 mod 60 this is nothing but the result will be 11 so the remainder of 251 when it is divided by 60 is 11 so the value of x what is the value of x we have found out it is 11 you can go and very well verify it here what is 11 mod 3 11 divided by 3 the remainder is 2 this is fine what is 11 mod 4 what is 11 divided by 4 4 to the 8 so the remainder is 3 okay this is also fine what is 11 divided by 5 5 into 2 is 10 the remainder is 1 so the distinct solution or the unique solution of x is 11 and this value satisfies the given equations that's how you find out the value of x using the chinese reminder theorem i hope you all have understood that yeah now let's take another example can you find out the value of x using chinese reminder theorem given x is congruent to 3 mod 5 x is congruent to 1 mod 7 and x is congruent to 6 mod 8. Can you try this one step by step and give me the solution now? So again you have to follow all these steps. How you compute x? It is nothing but a1, n1, c1 plus a2, n2, c2 plus a3, n3 c3 and you have to perform a mod of the entire sum with n so this is the formula we know this is a1 a2 a3 we know this is uh, n1 this is small n1 n2 n3 and we need to compute what is this n and capital N1, capital N2, and capital N3. Before starting off this Chinese reminder theorem, the very, very important check we have to make is are these numbers N1, N2, N3 co prime? 5 is co prime with 7, 7 is co prime with 8, and 5 is co prime with 8. So we have satisfied this condition. All the numbers N1, N2, N3, they form pairwise co prime numbers so this check should be the first check only then our chinese reminder theorem will work so we had we have done this check the next thing is we'll compute n what is n is nothing but n1 into n2 into n3 that is nothing but 5 into 7 into 8 so that is equal to 280 so we we have computed what is n the next thing is you have to compute capital n1 capital n2 and capital n3 what is capital n1 here that is nothing but small n2 into small n3 we know what is small n2 that is 7 small n3 is 8 so 7 into 8 is equal to 56 now let's compute capital n2 it is nothing but n1 into n3 so what is n1 n1 is 5 n3 is 8 so it is 5 into 8 that is equal to 40 now let us go and compute n3 that is nothing but n1 into n2 what is n1 n1 is 5 n2 is 7 so it is 5 into 7 is equal to 35 so we know we know the values for a1 n1 a2 n2 a3 n3 next step is we need to compute c1 c2 and c3 let's go and compute that let me write the value of n here n is 280 and uh, what is capital n1 that we have computed n1 is 56 and uh, capital n2 is 40 and capital N3 is 35 and what is small n1 
and one is five. This is from the equation. N two is seven, and N three is eight. So how will you compute this multiplicative inverse C one? That is nothing but N one C one is equal to one mod N one. Let's substitute what is n1. n1 is 56. We have to find c1 into mod n1 5 should be equal to 1. We can very well apply our shortcut method, but this is very simple and straightforward. 5 into 11 is 55. So when you use c1 to be 1, the remainder will be 1. So we'll say 56 into 1 mod 5 is equal to 1. What is 56? mod 5, 5 into 11 is 55, so the, the remainder will be 1 here. So what is the multiplicative inverse C1? C1 is equal to 1. So we have found out C1 is equal to 1. Let, next let's compute C2. What is C2? C2 is nothing but N2 C2 mod N2 is equal to 1. What is N2? 40. What is C2? We have to compute that. What is mod n2? It is nothing but mod 7. So we can use that uh, trick here 40 by 7. 7 into 5 is 35, so we get the remainder 5. So c2 into 5 mod 7 should be equal to 1. So you can think of some value for c2 such that when, it, when it's multiplied by 5 mod 7, we should get 1. So c2 can be 3. 5 into 3 is 15 mod 7. So it can be 3 into 5 mod 7. It's just trial and error. Think on it, you'll be able to get it. So it is 15 mod 7. What is 15 mod 7? 7 into 2 is 14. So remainder is 1, 1 equal to 1. So we can very well say C2 here, the multiplicative inverse is 3. Now let's go and find the multiplicative inverse C3. How you write C3? N3 C3 mod small n3 should be equal to 1. We know all these values. What is n3? 35. What is uh, C3? We have to find that mod what is small n3? 8. So we can apply our technique 35 by 8. What is 35 divided by 8? 32. The remainder is 3. So we can use this in this equation. 3 C3 mod 8 equal to 1. What you should multiply 3 with so that when you take a mod 8, it will be equal to 1. C3 when it is 3, say when we say C3 is 3, 3 into 3 mod 8 is equal to 1. What is uh, 3 into 3? That is nothing but 9 mod 8. 9 mod 8 is 1. So we can say 1 is equal to 1. So it's very simple. We can now conclude that C3 is the multiplicative inverse and the value that we are going to use is 3. So if you have any confusion on how to find this multiplicative inverse, please visit my previous lecture again. So C3, we have found out to be 3. So C1 is 1, C2 is 3, C3 is 3. Let's go and substitute the values. X is equal to A1 is 3, N1 is 56, C1 is 1. This is based on the calculations we have done earlier. Plus, what is A2? A2 is 1. What is N2? N2 is 40 and C2 is 3 plus what is a3 a3 is 6 n3 is 35 what is c3 3 the entire thing more what is capital n that we have decided we have already found it out as 280 so let's reduce this This is nothing but 168 plus 120 plus 630 
mod 280 x is equal to 918 mod 280 so the value of x is 78 which is nothing but the remainder of 918 divided by 280 we can very well verify x in our equations so we add uh, x is congruent to 3 mod 5 so an x is 78 78 divided by 5 that is 5 into 15 is 75 the remainder is 3 what is 78 divided by 7 what will be the remainder 7 into 11 is 77 the remainder is 1 we have achieved that what is 78 divided by 8 8 into 9 is 72 so the remainder is 6 so we have found the unique solution for x that is 78 which is satisfying the given set of equations i hope you all have understood how to determine the value of x using the chinese reminder theorem thank you